Hey everybody, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Violet. And I'm Ruby. And today we're taking a look at Role Player Adventures. Now, Role Player is a game I don't believe you guys have played, but in Role Player, it's a game that's already in existence where you roll dice and then you manipulate those dice to make stats for your characters. This is a game in that same universe, even if that universe is generic fantasy. Um, you do not need to have played Role Player before. This is a completely different game. Proof. These guys haven't played role player, but they have played role player adventures. This is a storytelling game where you work together and go through a story using dice to fight monsters or, or uh, non monsters um, <laughs> and uh, do skill checks. But you can manipulate those dice using cards. Let me show you. First thing that you're going to do in this game is each player who plays is going to build their characters. Now there is a whole section in the rule book about importing characters from role players that tells you how to do that. I haven't done that. I'm pretty happy because the game already comes with tons and tons of pre-generated characters. These are all the ones that we're not currently using in the game. So you'll take the character and it gives you a bunch of starting equipment, skills, traits, scrolls, armor, etc. These are cards that you're going to pull from a decks of cards. You're going to have these cards. This is going to form essentially a hand of cards that you have. It tells you a little bit about your character and then it gives you your stats which are going to range from 0 to 3 in strength, dexterity, constitution, intelligence, wisdom, and charisma. Once you pick your character, you're going to basically take their portrait. It's going to go there in that spot. You're going to take a sheet and this sheet slides into the board here like this and then you'll write down the different numbers. So for example, this, uh, this alchemist here, this dwarf alchemist is 101213. I'll write that there. And then you're going to fill each of these spots with cubes. So I'm gonna, for example, if strength is one, I'll put one cube there. Dexterity, no cubes. And I'm gonna fill these up with cubes. You also write your name here, the character's name here, their race, their class, and their health which is gonna change based on the number of players in the game. And then you're gonna have a bunch of cards in your hand. You also start with a class ability. And there are all different class abilities. And so this one here is an alchemist. So I'd find the alchemist class ability and I'm gonna put it here. It's a special ability that I can use throughout the game. Like I said, I'm also gonna look for leather gloves, runic bracelet, and grab all these cards and put them into my hand. You're also going to have a party board here. And on this party board, you're going to have different spots. You're going to keep track of your campaign. As you level up, you'll be filling things in. You're going to gain favor with the king, the starlet door, and the dragor, which can go up or down. You're going to keep your gold and your XP that you get here. You have bonus play tokens. You're going to write down keywords that matter over the course of the game. And there's other things that are going to happen. I don't want to spoil out of it. There are title cards that you will get that you'll keep from round to round. But what you do is you're just going to go in order here. You're going to go one all the way up to the final. So there are 11 different adventures that you'll play through. There's also a side quest adventure that you'll play through. And you can play through that anytime after you go through the first adventure. Now when you go through an adventure, you're going to find the adventure book. So the first book here, for example, is the Battle at Black Lake. You also need the Tome of Encounters. You'll use that for everyone. And then you're going to find a specific map. So this is the Battle at Black Lake. You're going to take your party and you're going to put it wherever the book tells you. In this case, you start here in the Borland Prairie. You'll notice there's some spots of the tokens. And what the game is going to tell you is it's going to tell you to mix some tokens up and you'll just take whatever numbers it tells you, mix them up and put them on these spots. And then you're going to open the adventure book and you're going to start reading. And it will tell you the first one really walks you through everything. It tells you what to put on the board to get ready. And then you already have a decision to make and it will tell you what number to turn to in this book. And as you go through the book, when you're in a different location, you're going to find the letter of that location. And when you get to a location, it's going to have you follow a bunch of things. So for example, when you get to location B, the goblin camp, it says if there's no XP at this location, then go read B1. So then you go there, you don't do anything else. Otherwise, you take the XP from this location. If you have this keyword, go there. If this the keyword, go there. And if you have this keyword, keep reading. So no matter what happens, you're just going to go through these things and you will eventually go and read one of the sections there. And it will tell you different things that will happen. 
As the game progresses, you're going to find various items. And the items will be different for each scenario. Like you might find a lantern, or you might find an unlocked sparrow, or you might find a mechanical whistle. You can try to use these items at different locations, and when you do, you simply add the number. So let's say I want to use item 86 at D, I go to D86. If I want to use a combination of items, 65 and 95, I would go there and read that. And then it tells you what happens when you use these items. The Tome of Encounters exists because when you cross and you turn over one of these numbers, it will tell you you have basically had like a random encounter. And that's when you go in here, and for example, this is Adventure 1, and I turn over 3, I would go to this spot and read that. And there's a whole bunch of different ending things that can happen from random encounters, and that's what this book is. It has a section for each of the adventures. But as you have these encounters and as you go to different locations, you're going to run into two different things that you need to do, skill checks and combat. When you do a skill check, the book will tell you to do some sort of skill check. So it might say, for example, do a deception level one. And so you'll turn in this book to deception and you're doing a level one. As you can see, a level four deception is going to be much harder to do. When you do a skill check, what players are trying to do is you need to place dice on these to pass. I need to place a blue three, a purple two, and a blue or purple four. It's up to me as to what I'm going to place there. So players are going to decide how they're going to try to attempt to resolve this skill check. So when this happens, you're going to build a dice pool. Now this will tell you your dice limit here is four. So if you want to do nothing, you simply can reach into your bag of dice that have the different colors in the game, roll four, bring out four dice and roll them. Well, this isn't going to go very well. So players can spend the different stats they have. So you have these cubes that are going to be in strength, dexterity, constitution. You can spend one putting it in your fatigue. If your fatigue is ever equal or higher than your health, so in the game that we're playing right now with the girls, our health started at 16, then you're out for a while. If everybody's out, then you quote unquote die. And there's a whole section on that. I won't spoil that for you other than to say death is not necessarily the end all be all in this game. The number of cubes you need to push over is one for number of players. So me, Ruby, and Violet are playing a three-player game, so we need to spend three cubes. Now, I could spend all three. So for example, my character has high strength. I can spend three cubes of my fatigue to get a red die, but we could all spend one die each. So here, for example, we might say we really want a purple and a white die, so we're going to spend those tokens, putting them into our fatigue, to basically just search through the bag to find the tokens I want. So here I want a purple and a blue die. And then we'll randomly pull the other two dice out. Two green dice. Well, that's not great. We now roll the dice. All right, well, I didn't get anything I wanted. We needed a purple two, a purple or blue four, or a blue uh, three. And these green dice don't help us out at all. But this is where the game is going to get interesting. Because remember, each person started with a bunch of cards. So that character I showed you starts with Transmute, Leather Gloves, a Runic Bracelet, Restore, Disguise, Famous, and Greedy. So on this I can say, hmm, Greedy, I can play this card. It changes any color to a black and green. Well, that's not helpful here. Here I can change a purple to any color. Well, that is helpful here because I could change this purple three to a blue three, which would then cover up that spot on the board. So that's that I might use that card. Each player can only use so many cards. You have a card play limit, so you may only play a certain number of cards. However, you have bonus tokens that sometimes let player play extra cards. When a player plays a card, they're going to get it back at the end of the skill check unless they play a card like this, which means the card then stays there until you do a rest. This one here says pull a die from the bag and it's an, a value two, but I don't know what color it's gonna be. This one lets me add a subtract one from a red die. This one lets me re-roll a black or a purple. And this one lets me pull a die from the bag and turn it into a one. So, so far I haven't done anything. I was able to turn that one into a three, but hopefully if I'm playing with other players, they have cards that allow them so that we can solve this check. 
If we don't, we fail it. And we go to the book and it tells you what to do when you fail it. Otherwise, if we get them all covered, we succeed. Either way, if you cover the ones with experience cubes underneath them, you will get the experience. So this is how a skill check works. Combat is very similar. With combat, it will tell you what card to pull. You have a big deck of enemy cards. Here's a couple enemies, uh, bandits or a basilisk here that players are going to be fighting. And you see that they have these tokens and these things that you need to stop. But you also can possibly have modifiers. So maybe it's a corrosive bandit. I don't know what that means, but you'd play it here and it will tell you what happens. Or maybe a weakened basilisk. So there are various modifiers that might change how you fight that monster or those villains. When you do this, you're going to be pulling dice from the bag equal to your combat dice limit, which starts at three, but you can pay to increase that as the game goes by. But you also don't have just one shot. You have three rounds to beat the enemies. So there's some very similar things here. You're going to pull dice. You're going to roll them. You're going to modify them. Okay, I, I was able to do, put one on there. However, in between rounds of combat, each spot that you don't cover is going to do damage to the players. They add more cubes the, the, to their fatigue. So you want to cover up as many of these as possible. If you don't cover them all up by the end of three rounds, then you lose the combat which could possibly kill the characters, depending on what happens. Um, but otherwise, you'll defeat the monster and go on. So this is kind of the main focus of the game. These skill checks and combats, there's some similarities between them, but they have some differences. But in both of them, you're going to be using these cards. In between combats and skill checks, players have a chance to rest. When you rest, you can spend your experience to roll dice to remove um, cubes from your fatigue and to refill the, your, your cubes on your different stats and also take some of the cards back into your hands, the ones that when you play them they stay out. So resting is good but it does waste your experience. When you get to the end of a game, an end of an adventure, you can also spend experience to up your stats, To you can spend your gold to buy more cards from your hand and there's more stuff that I don't want to spoil. There is an overall storyline that things will happen from round to round. There's also familiars that you can find that give you dual color dice, which are pretty neat. You know, this Christmas die here, which is also known as a blood badger, counts as a red or green die, which can be pretty handy. And there's other things that you can do. You can increase your combat dice limit from round to round. You can increase your skills. Right at the beginning of the game, your skill limit's four, but it can go all the way up to a 10, and everyone gets to add one. Um, you can, there's all kinds of things that you can do and buy and discover, and you're just gonna discover rare and cool cards that will also help you in your skill checks and combat. There is a lot going on in this game. A game comes with some trays, and here you can put all the different cards for the markets and everything, and these trays have lids. This is a heavy game, and I mean physically heavy, and that's because of all these books. Now, I like the art in this game, and I'm going to say I really like the story. I like the writing. I think it's well done. I haven't found any errors yet where, you know, it tells you to go to a spot and do different things, but I'm pretty happy with that. My one quibble might be I don't like the fact that the encounter book and the adventure books are separate. So, you know, here's Taryn's Trophy, and then Taryn's Trophy Encounters are in this book. I know that they did it so that there's two books that get, yeah, get passed around a table and different people read from each book, but I don't know. I would have just preferred having them in one book. But that's the minorest of quibbles. Other than that, I'm really happy with the production here. I thought the rules were very well laid out. I understood how to play the game when I needed to look something up. <gasps> There's an index that shows you where it is. But there wasn't that many rules in the game. It's mostly how do skill checks and how to combat work. And happily, they give you some reference cards that tell you how those two things work. And that's it. Uh, another minor quibble I might have about the game is you need to use a pencil, right? Because you're going to be constantly writing keywords down. And then it says erase them at the end of the mission. And I just kind of wish it had been dry erase or something. In fact, I'm going to be laminating all these pages because I don't want to have to keep erasing and writing again with a pencil. So we'd rather just use dry erase markers. <laughs> Okay, so 
at this moment, with us doing this, we have finished four of the adventures. So we've gone through four of the adventures. Each adventure took 90 minutes to two hours to go through, I think. Something Oops. like that. I thought it was an hour. Well, no, the first one was yeah. shorter. Yeah. After that, the one we played yesterday was pretty long when we went through it. There was a lot of stuff going on. And we didn't even do everything. You guys kind of went, at the end of an adventure, you can, you can often choose to like, I'm going to go to the next adventure, or it can be like, I'm going to go back and... I'm not trying around. to go through those extra, um, what are they called? Uh, encounters. Encounters, yeah. But you could have. They probably would have killed us all. All right. So far, so I went through the rules about dying. So far, we haven't died. We came really close. You did. <laughs> no, all of us came fairly close in that one thing. But the game lets you rest enough. The only problem is if you rest all the time, you also spend your valuable XP, which means you're not as strong for the next mission. But I don't think the game is overly hard, but we've also had some incredibly lucky rolls at certain points. Yes, purple is not our strong suit. Maybe. That's true, that's true. Well, we're working on that. So let me ask you this, so we'll start there. What did you think about the whole skill check combats where you get to play cards and do different things? It's very difficult, especially if you let Ruby roll and she like rolls all the wrong numbers. Shut up, you do that too. <laughs> you do it most of the time. I all right, all right, all right. <laughs> okay, we're not talking about the, the rolling. I'm talking about, do you like using cards to get the numbers where they're supposed to be? Yeah, it's very helpful. If it was just rolling, we would never even get past the first one. That is true. I really like that. And it requires some strategy, but also some luck. It Especially requires like luck, stuff. but we're also talking like, hey, teamwork, if I can turn this die to a green. Yeah, there is strategy. And you can add one to that green, and then we can put that one here. And, you know, I find that to be really interesting. I mean, sometimes there's a few skill checks or combats we got to, and we were like, we're not going to win this. <laughs> Definitely not. So we just went ahead and got the XP and left. Right. And the game is... I don't think it's overly difficult, but I could see you just having some really bad luck in a mission. But I, I don't know. I think that this game reminds me, there's an, an older game for Fantasy Flight called Legacy of Dragonhold, which has the same thing, but this has an actual game to it. I think this skill check and the combat check is an actual game. You're actually doing things. That's the whole, that's like one part, like it's a game. You're manipulating dice. The rest of the game is storytelling and going along a very interesting story. So there's a couple things about this. The game has keywords and title cards that keep track of what happens. And this matters because, and I don't want to spoil anything, but in the first scenario we had a chance to kill someone or not. We chose not to. And then that person crossed our paths in a future mission. And in fact, we've seen characters from the first mission and second, third mission show up later on. And we expect to see some of them. We've also managed to tick off some people, <laughs> which we feel like might come back to haunt us later on. It's fine. We'll beat them all up. <laughs> yeah, but it's interesting, right? Like, we met... Uh, again, it's hard, to, it's hard to talk about this about sports, but we in, the, in, in episode four, we met somebody whose relative we had dealt with harshly. <laughs> Uh, and it felt awkward, right? Yes. So what? Well, so what do you think about that? Do you like meeting people that you've met in adventures before? It was a lot of fun. It's kind of funny to see them and be like, oh, no. <laughs> but, or sometimes, oh, yes. Yeah. Because you're like, hey, yeah, we were friends before. <laughs> I like the thing about where you can move your favor up or down. Uh, I yeah. felt like that was a little creative. Okay, so I'm a little upset about that. Yeah. I think it's a good game mechanism, but I'm... Here's my problem. I, we are doing these by vote, you know, the different decisions that you can make. Currently, we have a majority of people in this party, two out of three, who keep <laughs> voting to help the monsters rather than the humans. The humans are really annoying, honestly. They're being so mean. They destroyed them for no reason at all. Yeah. Great. No, but I do like, so this game, I feel like if we wanted to, and I don't know that we will, but if we wanted to, we could come back and play through it again and make different decisions. Maybe not. <laughs> no, but you could come back and make different decisions. Yeah. You could say, oh, this time I'm going to pick this. And there's definitely things we haven't seen um, because we didn't go on this one random encounter. We didn't go use this item here. But I like the story decisions. It's fun. There's some funny moments. 
there are some very serious moments, I think. Um, did you like the story? Is it interesting? Yeah. Are you curious what's going to happen next? For the first few things, it was like, oh, there isn't there that much story. I mean, sure, we see characters, but there wasn't a lot to it. But now, after going through four, we realize, oh, wait, story actually matters. And it's a big story. Like, there's different planes of existence, and um, uh, we're, we're not in a good spot going into episode five. <laughs> but you, you said we deserved it. Yeah, you know we do. You do! You're the one making the bad decisions! Well, we just, it's not a bad decision. The humans, well, according to their laws, we probably deserved it. <laughs> All right, so you like the things. What about um, do you, the objects? Because you find these objects and you have to decide what object to use where. I don't find it to be really hard. Like, like I have a can... shovel and we're on a bunch of islands. Let's use a shovel everywhere. It feels like that. Yeah, also I like how you can, most of the time, Almost all combinations work, which I think is very creative because, like, yeah, but sometimes they're oh, like, well, why are you hitting the lamp with a shovel? <laughs> <laughs> why would we use a shard of glass with the crowbar? I don't know. Yeah, so I think that the, the story, though, is interesting, and they always have a good example. And I really like the writing because the writing will be like, oh, yeah, there's that giant you met earlier, and you. Um, stole his pigs, and now you met him again at the market, and he's like, uh, I remember you. Because the keywords do a really good job of that. And then when we find those rare cards that give you cool powers, that's fun. Mm -hmm. So. But it's also kind of hard to decide who gets the cards, because me and Violet are like, I want it. Yes, we've had a lot of paper, rock, scissors things go off. That in was this Ruby. Rock, paper, that was Ruby. Did you just call it paper, rock, scissors? Oh, good. It doesn't matter. Um, okay, so, final thoughts, Ruby, and what's your rating? I really like playing it. The story's fun. Lots of the mechanisms are kind of unique. Uh, we never mentioned this, but I think the characters were really cool. Uh, sure, there's a lot of luck, but there's also a lot of strategy. Overall, probably, I would probably give it a... Nine? <laughs> no, nine is good. And 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 uh, you're right. You did mention the characters. We should talk about that briefly. You each have a, your own character class card, which you can flip over once before between rests. That gives you special abilities. Um, There's this one character. The character I play as. Apparently, I lost my memories. And I'm trying to find someone who looks like me, who's apparently a special mage. And I'm like, well, what if that actually is you? You lost your memories. How do you know? <laughs> Yeah, good point. You're the clone. Um, I know there's an expansion to this. Uh, we don't have that expansion, so I don't know what that's like. I think it adds those stories into it. But even without it, it's a lot of fun. What about you? I really enjoy the story because most story games are just like, hey, you got to go on this quest and beat this monster. This one actually is very complex and adds like more story and depth to it. It's not like just a game with a story added to it. It's like just the story is really good. Uh, I like the game play. It's really fun, like, rolling dice, manipulating it. I enjoyed that. I kind of wish I knew I was supposed to use pencil on the paper, though. Okay, okay, It's a okay. role-play game. How do you not know this? Again, we're going to laminate them and use yes, markers. Yes, but I was still very annoying. It's not the game's fault. I know. Okay. Still. Just. I will give this a nine. Also so a leave nine. Leave alone. Wow, okay, that's two nine. So I'm giving it an eight, which is still really high. Get off my case. I really enjoy this. So here's what here's something, and you listeners out there can hold me to it. I promise them we're gonna finish this. Um, why do you all look so <laughs> suspicious? We will finish we will go through this and finish this because I wanna see where the story ends up. You said that about adventure tactics. You also I like what happened to stuff Abels. I said we will finish this, so <laughs> we'll come play? back. We'll do uh, another bit when we're done with it. We'll talk about the whole campaign as a whole, and we'll even do a spoiler. We'll do that as a spoiler video so we can talk about the stories and the things that we liked in it. Um, but as of now, if you like story adventures, you're going to love this. But if you like them okay, but you also want a game with the dice and manipulating them, and it's teamwork, and it works solo. You can play by yourself, too. You have more actions you can take per turn. But I would not want to do this solo. Playing solo is just kind of I feel sad. Like if I would die. No, 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 don't don't go down there. Sometimes no. people don't have anyone to play with. That is true. So and also you play video games solo all the time. That's different. No, no it's it not. 
It's sad that you have no friends to play video games with. <laughs> All right. Well, anyhow, hey! that's Role Player Adventures. Until next time, I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Violet. And I'm Ruby. Friendless Ruby. <laughs> See you next time. <laughs>